Now, sticking with the coaching theme, Terry, I'm going to ask you a question. It's sort of tongue-in-cheek, but also not really. Dragons of the Bulldogs play this week, and does the winner claim Coach of Year honours? Um, no. I think ladder position has to come into it a little True. bit. But you can make a great case for Shane Flanagan without that if the Dragons make the finals because they would have gone from 16th to 8th. And that's a bigger leap than what the Dogs will have made unless the Dogs somehow finish second. So I think flano has got a real, real good case to be the coach of the year. However, I, I still think it's Cameron Serraldo because Cameron Serraldo has less skin in the game than Flanagan has. And let's face it, Flanagan was looking like he was going to be a, a lifer at Cronulla before circumstances happened. He's taken his time out of the game. He's gone and done some consulting. He was a really good commentator. He got himself back into the coaching gig now. And he hit the ground running quicker than I thought he would with a really dross team. Mm. Serraldo has had a little bit more time to build, but less experience. And this year, no one, no one apart from biased Dogs fans, had them in the top eight. And you can go back, you can, you can quote me on that one. Go back and have a look at your Daily Telegraph, your Sydney Morning Herald. Go back and have a look at the NRL.com pundits who picked the top eight. No one had the Dogs in there. Do you know where Fox Sports had them in the preseason? Where they had them? 14th. Ranked? was 17th. Last. Last. Came out today. A lot of the Dogs fans are getting on it and enjoying it now. Good on them. Go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I I, I can I, I make a higher case for Serraldo just because Flanagan has runs on the board. But I would, I would sit down and listen to you talk all day. But if you were to say to me, it's Shane Flanagan because they're going from 16th to finals. I'm, I'm not going to fight you. I think these are the two. I think if Craig... Because the way the Storm were going and it looked like they were going to put six to eight points on Penrith, you kind of go, can you really take it off him? Because he's beaten the greatest team of all time by six to eight points. It's now only two points. And, I think and they play they each can, other. Yeah, I think even if they hold on to the minor premiership, I don't think the gap's big enough to overcome what the other two have done. Oh, hey, look, Serrato... Shane Flanagan has overcome St. George Illawarra. He has. And that side, let's be honest, we had him last. Confidently. Mm-hmm. The last couple of years we picked last, they played prelims. And this year we're like, well, we don't need to worry about that. Still on. Unlikely, but it's still on. So maybe the, the haunt continues. But I, I love what he's doing at the Dragons. I, I mean, I hate it as a Sharks fan, but as a rugby league fan, I love it. I love what is doing at the Bulldogs. So scenes, you know, apart from the negativity, which we're not going to touch on... The scenes at Belmore were downright incredible. We've seen Belmore games that have had like 7,000 people there and they've just gone through the motions. That was a legitimate return to Belmore and I loved every minute of it. Either of those two are absolutely fine by me. I think Bellamy's out of the running now, although he's got Melbourne to potentially win the minor premiership, missing Pappenhausen for, what, eight weeks and Cam Munster for almost the whole season. So I can hear an argument for the great man, but I think Serrata and Flanagan, I'd like to go to both of them and say, look, Saturday, Sunday, whenever the game is, it's all on the line here. Just for the lols.